Howdy, Hoss. Howdy, Mr. Porter. The jury's still out, looks like. Yeah, over three hours now. Well, it's taking them so dang long. Seems like to me it's a cut and dried case. That Irishman just up and shot poor old Fred Demmer, then robbed him. Don't seem to me they got much to deliberate on. A man's life at stake, Mr. Porter. I don't reckon you make that decision without some pretty serious considerations. Hoss? I'll lay odds it's that brother of yours that's holding up the verdict. I don't hold with putting young fellas like Joe on a murder jury. You need men who think alike. Men who'll take an eye for an eye. You know what I mean? Mr. Porter. Oh, Miss Demmer. Uh, just telling the horse I Carter. heard. Do you mind if I trouble you for a cup of water? That courtroom is, is, is like an oven. Of course, Mrs. Demmer. Come on over to the store with me. Town appreciates how you must be feeling. What with the trial, not letting you forget your sorrows for one minute. First time I sat on a jury in a murder trial. Oh, what a responsibility. Deciding whether a man is going to live or die. It's like you're burdened with the power of God. All right, now, hold it, hold it. Look, if we're all going to talk at once, we're not going to get anything decided. Now, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. We already decided. Three hours ago, everybody here was set to vote Terrence O'Toole guilty. Everybody excepting you. All right, and I'll be ready, too, as soon as we go over the evidence again. We've already done that. Oh, sure we have. Piecemeal. Well, that's as good a way as any. We talked it all out. Anybody that's made up their mind ain't going to change it by going over the whole thing again. Maybe not, but there's a man sitting over in that jail cell waiting for us to decide whether he hangs or goes free. Now, if I was that man, I'd like to know that this jury was taking its time deciding. Now, we've already taken a lot of time. When I leave this room, whatever the verdict is, I want to be able to live with it. That's not too easy. Let's go over it one more time. You had enough. You ought to be over at the courthouse with your mother. She needs someone to Step stand. Stepmother. Nevertheless, she needs someone to stand by her at a time like this. You know more of me than a housekeeper. Hey, well, who asked you to poke your big nose in my business? Can I get another drink or not? like that ever since the jury started deliberating. Yeah. Well, it's sort of a hard time for old Jeff. Losing his paw like that. 
This trial dragging on. It's taking that journey for so dang long anyway. <laughs> I swore in a Bible I saw two will kill my pa and they just string him up. Jury's in! All right, O'Toole, the court's ready for you. The hour of judgment is at hand, is it? That's right. I welcome it, then. You got a verdict? Oh, we got one, Your Honor. Well, what is it? What is it? We say guilty. You got anything to say before the sentence in? Well, perhaps a few words that do no harm. I'll not take long. Well, get on with it. Tis uh, many a land I visited since leaving the old country, Your Honor. Half of them are the devil's own, let me tell you. With no democratic processes of laws you have here. I commend you, sir, and the prosecutor, and the jury as well. Tis a fair trial I've had. I'm that grateful you'll be hearing no word from me against it. But though these good people have deliberated fairly and have rendered their verdict, by the Almighty, they've made an error. Terence O'Toole has been falsely accused and wrongly condemned. I stand innocent of these charges. I've said my piece, Your Honor. I thank you kindly for the privilege. The jury has found you guilty of robbing Fred Dimmer of $400 and shooting him down in cold blood. I sentence you to hang by your neck until dead. Sheriff, you have a job to deliver this man to the U.S. Marshal at Carson City tomorrow. The hanging will take place there. All right, Your Honor. All right, O'Toole. That's all. Justice was done. Yes, I'm thinking it was. Joe, you sure missed some good apple pie tonight. Old Pop Singh almost outdid himself. Yeah, I bet. Paul wants us to do some work on that barn roof tomorrow. You want to haul the shingles out tonight? 
Yeah, I can wait till tomorrow, can't it? Yeah, I reckon so. You're still bothered by that verdict, ain't you? What if I am? Just ask it. I think you ought to talk to little Joe. What's the matter? Well, he's worked himself up a real fret. Yeah, I noticed it at supper. The trial release got him worried, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he's taken a mighty big load on his shoulders. Well, I'll talk to him. See if you can make sense out of these figures, will you? Yes, sir. Some more coffee? Oh, a little while. Uh, that trial sure upset everybody's schedule, didn't it? That's all folks talked about. Well, I guess the town will get back to normal now that it's over. Yeah, sure. Everybody will be happy now. Tool will hang and justice will be served. You don't seem to think so, do you? Oh, I should think so. I went over the evidence twice. I made it... I made all the jurors do the same thing. I wanted... I wanted to be sure. You brought in a verdict, Joe. Yeah, we brought in a verdict. The evidence was there. Tool saw Dimmer take the money out of the bank, the $400. He saw Dimmer's wife stay in town to shop. Figured he'd be out of the ranch alone. He followed him out there, but he wasn't alone. Jeb was there, saw the shooting. A little while later, the sheriff gets his O'Toole and he's got about $400 on him. It all fits. Did you believe O'Toole's story about earning that money for passage back to Ireland? No. No, I don't believe that. The, the only question was, what happened to the billfold? And the first thing you got to figure is O'Toole threw it away. What's troubling you, Joe? I don't know. Not the evidence. Just the way O'Toole looked at me. We brought in the verdict. The way he stood up there and looked every single one of us right in the eye. Said we made a mistake. I just can't believe that a man could look at you that way and still be guilty. Joe, you made a decision. And I doubt that there's a man alive who's never had a second thought about any decision he's made. But you were asked to do a job to serve on a jury. And you accepted that responsibility. And you did your job conscientiously, intelligently. That's all the law asks for. You did your job well. Breakfast is on the table. Morning, Pa. Morning, Joe. Listen, I wanted to ask you if uh, maybe I could go to work on that roof this afternoon sometime. 
Marty has anything more important to do? Well, there's something I have to do, yeah. What? Well, it's, it's just some person I want to take care of in town. Look, Paul, I can start that roofing by myself when Joe gets back. Hey, would you? Yeah. Good. Okay, I'll be back. Well, wait a minute. Have something to eat before you go. Uh, no, thanks, Paul. I'm not hungry this morning. Well, you'll be back for an early lunch, you hear? Right, I will. I'll be back by noon, I promise you. ask a favor of you. Well, I hope it's something that I can do for you now. I'm leaving for Carson City with Mr. O'Toole for long. Well, I wonder if I could go in and talk to O'Toole for a minute. You go right ahead, but don't take too long. Better leave your gun right here, too. Right. My name is Cartwright. I was on the jury. Yes, I know. All of your faces are mounted like portraits on the walls of my soul. That little act you put on in court yesterday came kind of late, didn't it? Would it have uh, made a difference to you before the deliberations? Well, all the evidence was against you. I just couldn't understand why you bothered denying it. Oh, you've had me admit to murder, then? Well, why not? It's not going to make any difference now. So you've uh, come to hear confession, have you? It is the condemned man's immortal spirit that concerns you. You've uh, come to offer God's grace, perhaps, to help purge my soul of sin before the eternal sleep? No, that's not why I came. I... Then I misunderstood you, sir. All the while I was supposing it was for an admission of my guilt you came. Here I was supposing that you sought assurance you'd sent the proper man to the gallows. But you see, Mr. Cartwright, I stole no man's cash, and I'm innocent of murder. So I'll not be administering that balm to your conscience, badly in need of it as you'll continue to be. for me, will you? Thanks, Sam. The fellows are playing for pretty high stakes, aren't they? Yeah. They ain't small-time gamblers, Joe. What well, Jeb Dimmer's doing in a game like that? I don't know. But he's been at it since yesterday after the trial on and off. How's he doing? Heavy loser. But he keeps coming back with more money. How about a drink? Uh, I could use one. Give me a beer, will you? Gave you a pretty bad time over there, huh? I want it back. Well, here's that verdict you turned in. And a good hanging. Pretty anxious for that hanging, aren't you? 
Well, you were on the jury. That, that was the verdict, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. How much money do you say you lost over there? Why, are you backing somebody? No, I just didn't figure you for that kind of stakes, that's all. Now, well, maybe you better explain what you meant by that. I'm not going to explain anything to you. Hey, Arrow Tool. Is it your plan to leave soon, Sheriff? Well, we got to be over in Carson City early this afternoon. Marshal will be waiting then? Yeah, the Marshal and the, uh, the other official. Yeah, I was meaning him too. You better eat up. It's a three-hour ride over there. It is not the pangs of hunger I was concerning myself with, Sheriff. Will you suit yourself? Hi, Paul. Ah. Boy, it's hot up there on that roof. Oh, it's hot everywhere. Long past noon. Yeah, well, we'll be through this job in about an hour, Paul. Oh, I wasn't worried about that. Little Joe said he'd be back by noon. You ain't worried about him, are you? No, I'm not worried about anything happening to him. It's just that I wonder why he went into town. He wouldn't say. <laughs> well, I just got to remind myself over and over again that I've got grown sons, and they have grown up problems which they have to solve by themselves. That's right. <laughs> like that roof. Yeah, well... I'll get on that right now. Now, come on, everybody, let's go to the house. Let's get something cold to drink. Hmm? Good idea. Come on, Jake. Hello, Mrs. Dimmer. Good day. Mrs. Dimmer, I'm Joe Cartwright. I sat in on the murder jury. Yes, I know that, surely. Well, I'm sorry to come out here and bother you like this, but... Well, I just wondered if there was anything else you could tell us. Anything that didn't come out at the trial. With my not knowing anything, they kept me from testifying. Yeah, I know. There's nothing else you can add. What would I be knowing? Shopping like I was in town when Fred was killed. Well, there's a man about to be hanged for murder. I just wanted to be sure he was the right one. Sure, anybody can look in his face and see he's the right one. And weren't you given better reason at the trial? Weren't you yourself one of them that said Terence was guilty? Terence? It was Terence O'Toole I was meaning to say. There's many a chore here to be done before, Doc. I'll thank you to be leaving me about my work. Mrs. Dimmer, you know Jeb has been gambling pretty heavy in town the last few days. I'll not be a party to your prying. Leave the matter be as it stands, why don't you?
What do you want? It wasn't much he asked, and I had little enough to tell. Well, I don't want that cart right around anymore, you hear? Do you suppose he came on my invitation? Well, you just make it plain to him the next time he comes snooping around and he ain't welcome. I'm thinking it's for you to tell him that. You do like I say. If you want to go on keeping house around here. Are you thinking the ranch will tend to itself while you're off in town gambling? <laughs> Is that what Cartwright came to tell you? And how is it you have the means to gamble? I'm remembering you hadn't the money, and there wasn't a cent of ready cash in the bank. Fred took it all out to make payment on those cattle he fancied. It ain't none of your affair where I get my money. It could set people to wondering. What people? It could set people to wondering how a young man with his pockets empty suddenly acquired sufficient to gamble after his pa was laid in the grave. Caught right? Is that who's wondering? It could set people to thinking that maybe everything that should have come out in the trial didn't. Well, now, I know something that didn't come out in the trial, Molly. Something else that might start people to thinking. You see, I saw you with O'Toole the day before my pa was shot. He was an acquaintance of mine from Dublin many years before, recognizing me in town. And that's all there was to that. Well, I seen you, Molly. Seen you right out, right out here in the pasture. Talking. Talking like lovers. Like maybe all you could want is to get shed of your husband. Seeing me in town, he rode out to pay his respects. But I barely recollected him. And that's all there was to it. Think anybody's gonna believe that? Little good it'll do them not to. See, I could I could do things with that information, Molly. Then in heaven's name, do it and the devil take you. I could talk up to the sheriff. I could tell him what I seen. What is it you're insinuating? That it was me plotted Fred's death with Terence? No, I didn't insinuate that, Molly. You just kind of set the thought in my head. <sighs> Looks like maybe you better quit making such a big to-do over where I get my money. Then maybe I'll forget I saw you and your friend. Told it's time to go. O'Toole, I said we're leaving. By the Almighty Sheriff, I didn't hear you. I was that far lost in the fancies of the pack. <laughs> Sorry, Sheriff. I didn't mean anything of a personal nature.
Throw me a bear, will you? That's a tool. A tool! Hey, Sam, did the Sheriff and O'Toole leave for Carson City already? O'Toole broke out. Sheriff's got a posse out to hunt him down. O'Toole's not going to get very far. Wouldn't surprise me if one of them posse boys didn't save the Sheriff a long ride back to Carson City. Ain't much fun hunting a man down this kind of heat. Yeah, and they're hunting down the wrong man. Huh? By the almighty Molly girl, are you alone? I no place else in the world to come save this one, Molly. It's me that are hunting like the hounds after a fox. I'd not come troubling you, you understand, but I'm hurt too bad to go on. Can you help me? Don't you hear me, girl? I have need of you. I had need of you once, too. It was just 21 years ago next month that I waited at the church for a Dublin lad who failed to come. It was a base deed I committed that day. But it was for you I'd done it. For your sake alone, I didn't come. For me, was it? You'd have made a poor match for yourself, Molly. You were last one in a house and, and little ones. And me with the wanderlust deep in my bones. I was that believing I waited all night. In my white gown and veil. The pity of my friends. Oh, I had a need of you. Did you not hear my heart crying out to you? My own heart answered it, Molly. Many's the night I'd be sitting in some divilcurse waterfront saloon, weeping bitter tears at the memory of her I gave up. And many's the night I've wished you dead. Sure, you had reason to wish me in my grave. But now, knowing why your groom never came, and the torment he suffered for it, 
Perhaps now your pity wouldn't be amiss. You have a queer way of reasoning it out, don't you? I couldn't go off to die without telling you why I deserted you long ago. Tell the truth, Molly. Doesn't your heart soften a bit to me now? Seeing all this pain and suffering I'm in? Oh, I never had a hate in me for any man. Leastways, not for you, Terence. It was the hurt of you going off. It was the pain of losing you that set the stone in my heart. Almighty bless you, Molly. I, I know that. Will you help me now? Will you be tending my wound, Molly girl, so I can make good my escape before those baying dogs get the little fox in their teeth? Jeb says I'm not to be receiving you anymore. Mrs. Dimmer, did this bill fall belong to your husband? Yes, it was Fred, surely. See, his initials on it. But how is it you've come by it? Jeb had it. Sure then, Jeb lied. It wasn't Terence who killed Fred. Mind if I talk to him? It's the billfold he found. It's the proof you'll be needing you're an innocent man. Where did you get that? Jeb had it. Saw him throw it in the brush about a mile away from here. You can forget that trip to Carson City. There's not going to be a hanging. They'll be reopening the case now. It's just a matter of time before you'll be a free man. I'd not count on that, Molly. What are you saying? I'd not be trusting the mood of a posse. Hanging a man first and asking the questions after. No, I'll have no more of posses and juries. Better to be riding back to the East and book passage for Ireland. O'Toole, that doesn't make sense. You try to get away from here, they'll have every lawman in the West on your tail. All right, I'll go with you. Would you give me a moment to say goodbye to Molly first? Sure. I'll be right outside. When I get back to Ireland, I'll be sending for you. Will you? We'll be a lass and a lad in love again. And the years falling away. We'll be waiting in the same church. Be invited to the same friends. Sure, it'll be like I dreamed it a thousand nights since, and time not a minute older. I'm wishing it could be that way again. But who can say nay to the years? The young, fair Irish maiden is long gone, you see. I'm thinking it's of someone else you've dreamed, not the widow Dimmer. And woe to those years, and to them that still dream. Better not to have crossed the American continent. Better never to have chanced upon Molly McGregor on the streets of Virginia City. Better not to have known what that man had done to you. A man that set you down in the wilderness to struggle with barren soil, to carry the slop of pigs. An evil man who took away your youth and wore down your beauty till what remained was, was flayed and lacerated. I couldn't let a man like that go on living without paying for his sins. Was you after all, not Jeb. I. It was me. Oh, Molly. You were the star of beauty. All my life, I carried the image of you in my mind and heart. 
And when we met that day in Virginia City, my heart stopped. It was all there in your face and your eyes what he'd done to you. That brutal beast of a man destroying the beauty of your shining eyes. And then to see him strike you there in the street. Blast his eyes. He deserved more than death. You were always in my heart, Terence. Always. It didn't matter what he did. Even when the work was brutal hard and the days longer than I could bear and when he wouldn't buy food or a piece of cloth for a new dress. Always, through it all, somewhere inside of me, my heart sang, you're young, fair Molly, and someday your lover will be coming back and his heart will be singing too. Bless you, Molly. And all eternity, I'll not forget you. Fozzie's coming. Better let me have that gun. I won't be going with you. I'm afraid you're mistaken. I didn't steal, but I did kill him. We can still get away. I'll be pretending I'm your hostage. You wouldn't stand a chance out there. You'll be a fugitive for the rest of your life. Alone, I would. Move. Molly. I never stopped loving you. Fine, ma'am. He, he must have known we'd shoot back. It was to spare me the lot of a fugitive's woman that he done it. He was thinking it was that or his life. It was me. It was his last thought. You see, he always loved me. Always. But you did see O'Toole shoot your paw and then run off. Now, that part is the truth, ain't it? Well, when I come up to him and saw he was dead, I'd... all I could think of is that he's going to leave that ranch to Molly. Because he never gave me nothing while he was alive. So I figured I at least ought to have the money. So I just took the billfold with the $400 in it and figured they'd blame it on O'Toole. But it was me. And... I stole it. I took it. It's so hard to believe that I could have been so wrong about him. I guess I better learn to take everything with a grain of salt from now on. Mm. Well, Joe, I'll tell you. I think it's much better to keep on looking for the good in a man. 
finding yourself wrong than to be looking for the evil in a man and finding yourself cynical. Hell, I did a lot of good looking for the good in this man. Well, it's another way of looking at it. Suppose you'd been right. You'd have saved a man from hanging. Don't let it sour you the first time you believe in a person and find that you're wrong. Next time you may be right. Come on. Now, where are we going? Well, I'm not going anywhere. You'll be out to help Hoss finish fixing the roof. <laughs> okay. Oh, Joe. Before you go, there's something I want you to know. I'm proud of you.